Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're taking a look at the Blasphemous Roster, Guilds of Infinigrad and Their Machinations by Michael Rastin. The basic idea here is that you have an infinite city full of crazy rival guilds all going after each other and hiring adventurers to complete missions. And this generates weird factions with weird objectives. So if that's what you're looking for, this is a great place to look. Here's the back of our book here. This was a review copy given to me by the author. And as usual, this video is brought to you by my awesome patrons over on Patreon, uh, as well as my free newsletter, The Gladizen, which keeps you updated on all of the cool stuff happening in the old school scene, whether that be from the blogosphere or YouTube or podcasts. You can sign up for free down in the description below and uh, keep yourself updated. All right, let's look at what we get inside the book here. So first thing that immediately pops out is the way that it is designed and formatted. It feels a little bit like Fire on the Velvet Horizon in the sense that it feels very collage-like and it feels kind of like a hand cobbled together old style zine. This is written by Michael Rastin. Um, additional thanks to Ben L, Trent B, and Ruined by Luke Gearing. And Salvaged by Jarrett Crater. A general overview here of the setting, though the setting is, you know, more or less not terribly important uh, unless you want to run it specifically in Infinigrad. These types of guilds, I think, would be perfectly useful in any sort of grim fantasy city. They would work perfectly fine. All right, and we have our guild generators, which is the real meat of the book here. So I'm going to get out some of my dice here and we're going to roll up some guilds and see what we get. Uh, before we get going, though, first thing to point out is that um, the book's printing, there is a lot of black in the printing. And I believe this is print on demand from Lulu or maybe from somewhere else, but I think it is print on demand. The issue that I ran into when uh, I got this review copy is that a lot of the pages were stuck together. So, for example, I don't know if it's very clear, but there's like some white spots here. That's because I actually had to pull these pages apart. And this was on more than one page where the black ink, especially in the crease, had stuck to the other page because uh, the ink was so thick. Now, I don't know whether that was just a problem with my copy, or it could possibly be because I live in Arizona where it's like 110 degrees outside right now. And so that could have affected the ink as well. But I thought I should just point it out. It doesn't, that, it's not that big of a deal. It hasn't really ruined the look of it. Um, and it's not really noticeable at this point. So it could not be that big of a deal to most people. Uh, so first off, to uh, generate a guild, what we need is the expertise and a forename, and then we'll combine it with a modus operandi and an aft name. So let's see what we get here. So first we roll a d10 to see what page we are going to look at. All right, page three. Let's go to page three or section three up here at the top. And then here we're going to roll a d4 to see which of these tables we're going to look at. I got a one, so we're gonna look it over here. We're gonna roll a D6 two times for each of those. So the uh, expertise is small animals and pets. And the four name is gonna be the stringing. So what you notice here is that the expertise and the four name are kind of connected to each other in some ways. It's not precisely, but they're sort of in the same ballpark. Um, which allows you to create uh, factions with expertises that sort of match their names, but not precisely. I kind of like that. Um, so we have yeah, the stringing that focuses on small animals and pets. Now we're going to roll for the other table. We have uh, page four. So the modus operandi and aft name. Okay, page four. Let's roll to see which of these tables we look at. Number four, and we roll a, page, uh, a D6, or sorry, a D4 for this one. Number two, uh, the work has been halted for aeons. That's their operandi. So they haven't been collecting pets for a very long time. And their aft name is one, of inverting. So their name is the stringing of inverting. And they collect small pets, but they haven't been able to for a very long time. And of course, you can tweak that if you like, or you can uh, add more information to it. And we have some examples here of uh, 
gills that he has actually rolled up. So we have scavengers of the larval, for example, at the top here. These pages are very reflective, so we're getting a lot of light on them. Um, scavengers of the larval, miners, sources, and purveyors of the finest, most luxuriant ore granules. Their expertise is rock crushers, and their modus operandi is always whisper, literally and metaphorically. And then he kind of fleshes out what that would be like in play. There's a lot of, you know, uh, mental putting things together and expanding on, in it on your own head. These are really more uh, bits of information for inspiration. Next, we have a very interesting part of this, which is the visual generator instructions. So this gives you aesthetics and visuals to help you come up with your um, look and the general feel of your guild. So what does a guild member look like? First, roll a d6. Okay, let's do that. I got a three. And so we're gonna go to page 33 there, page 33. And then we're gonna roll on this grid. It says we need a d6 and a d8. We have three and one, so let's say three, one. Uh, well, there's not a lot of information there, but maybe we could take this whole character as the piece of information. So our characters or our faction guild members tend to look like that. What is our next step? What does their base of operations look like? Roll a d6, okay. Got a three, page 39. And again, we're gonna roll a d6 and a d8 on this table. One and one, so right there. I guess you could either kind of interpret this little square or kind of look at the whole thing and take that as their base of operations. One thing I would have really liked, I think that this visual inspiration generator is a really cool idea. I would have liked to see a lot more pictures on each of these pages uh, because the instructions are to just interpret what's in that square, which I guess you could do, um, but there are definitely squares where there's little to no information or there's just nothing really to go on. Whereas I think this would be much more useful if this was denser with lots of crazy images instead of some things that are very vague. Like if you roll this uh, square, it's just like a black square with partially white. And you could interpret that somehow, but you could have given a lot more information, I think. So then we take those two pieces of information and we can combine them with roll a D12, okay? I got a 12, so page 54. I'm gonna roll on this page right here, D6 and a D8. I got a three and a five. So we're gonna go here. So those two images of that character and that place you could combine with this square, or I suppose this whole picture. Again, it would be great if each of these squares had a different image in it. I think that would just be more useful, personally speaking. Lastly, we have a job generator at the back where you can roll up the target, the desired action to do to that target, the job location, the danger at the site, and the reward. So for example, the target of the job, um, let's just roll on this table right here. That's a D10, just to save some time here. And it's something or someone broken, lost, ruined, and destroyed. Okay, maybe it's a ruin or maybe it's like a prisoner. Uh, what is the desired action? Uh, let's roll a d10 on this table. To reorder or forcefully correct the target. What is the job location? Uh, let's roll on this one. Number five. A dock, pier, or wharf? A place of work on the water. What is the danger at the site? Let's roll over here. Number seven. Traps that expel that expulse volumes of destructive material. Maybe cannons? You are on a dock. Maybe there's ships with cannons or maybe there's bombs. And the reward for pulling off this mission. Uh, again, a D10. Let's roll on the first table. And the reward is a miniaturized treasure. So you have a, a near infinite number of guilds that you can create here, as well as rewards and missions. So I think that's really great if you're running a dense city campaign. Um, I, as I mentioned before, my main criticism would be that the visual generators, which I think is a really cool idea, had more information on them. We have a layout generator here, which you can roll up different, I guess, dungeons or layouts of buildings, just because you have these different rooms that connect together in different ways. And then you can roll on these tables to see what's in the room. For example, let's see, roll a d12. What do I get for this one? 
It's a foe indulging in treasure. Um, or perhaps, if we roll down here, it's empty. It's a place of mental storage. And that's the end of our book. So as usual, links will be down in the description below for where you can check this out for yourself. Um, it seems to be very useful if you're running any sort of uh, fantasy city campaign. And let me know if you use it and how it turns out for you. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. See you guys next time.